Hey, and welcome back. I just saw this article and I thought it would be a good idea to talk about it and read it. So let's go ahead and get into this. All right. From The Hollywood Reporter. The Mandalorian fans turn on season three a massive drop in quality. The backlash is strong with Mando as users review scores plummet and some critics pull out their blasters while Paramount Plus Picard surges in acclaim for its home stretch. This is true. Picard season three is awesome. Picard season one and two sucks, but Mandalorian sucks. Last week at the Star Wars celebration, Disney released a flurry of exciting announcements such as an Ahsoka trailer and three new movies, which are really, truly going to happen this time. Promise. That's a good one. We'll have to see if anything comes out of that. Yet while fans embrace the news, the crown jewel of Disney Star Wars TV universe, The Mandalorian, was arguably having its worst week ever. And I'm sure it's going to get even worse, because more and more people are dipping out. The show's latest episode, Guns for Hire, which was last week, scored the, dr the drama's weakest fan review via IMDb since the neo-western sci-fi drama launched four years ago. The episode wasn't entirely an outlier as fans gripes about uh, as fan gripes about the show's third season have been raising rising in general with the series rotten tomatoes users review this season plummeting from their usual low 90s perch to just 57 percent and its imdb average similarly though not as sharply ebbing downward oh trust me it is getting there it is going to get there because this season is bullcrap it's a bait and switch and yeah they just turn off everyone yes down here you see a picture of the duchess and captain bombardier star the mandalorian is a is a parody if if this last episode hadn't happened with this parody, it might have said, okay, uh, but last episode was a parody, and it killed it. Critics wildly, widely praise the show's third season premiere. Disney typically only provides one episode of Mandalorian to critics at a time, yet some in the press have stated to sound off as well. In meh. Meh. Is all I can say to that. It's rather surprising. It's rather surprising blowback for a show that's been universally beloved since its launch. A rare title that is fa family friendly consumer hit critically acclaimed and generates awards love. The first two seasons were nominated for best drama Emmys. Yes, they were. The thing is, see, the difference between this and Picard, the people who made the first and second season of Picard basically left and let this guy take over, and he loves Star Trek and making good Star Trek. The problem with The Mandalorian is the people who made season one and season two are still making season three, and it's bullcrap. So what's happening? Uh, let's see. Interestingly, and adding some credence to the blowback, the complaints aren't centered around one thing, but are rather a messiasma of grievances ranging from plotting to dialogue to unconveniencing special effects to jarring cameos. A recent episode featuring Lizzo and Christopher Lloyd and Jack Black, which gave off campy Star Wars holiday special vibes. And it was just, oh my god, just shoot me. Shoot me! CNN critic Brian Laurie, who I have no idea, wrote that the show is experiencing an identity crisis collider. Ugh 
has been pl uh, pummeling Mandalorian with headlines like, here's what's killing the Mandalorian season three. Digital trends demand to know what the hell happened to the Mandalorian. Forbes say says the series fumbled a key storyline and the whole season seems to have lost its way. With both Mando and Grogu fading into the background and no clear overreaching story to follow or villain to root against. Really? I mean, it took us seven episodes to finally see Gideon, our main villain? And yeah, bait and switch, what a surprise! Oh my god, that lost its way. Line is reoccurring with movie web headline how the Mandalorian lost its way, decrying a sheer lack of anything to drive the story forward. What a surprise! Fans have naturally been even more brutal. Massive drop in quality, declared one on Rotten Tomatoes. Another, this show has transformed out of all recognition. No longer is it the man with no name in space, but the man with no purpose in space. Uh, well, to... To no man since woman is better and is going to lead the Mandalorians into death. Another, the show is not Mando Shore anymore. Oh wow, plot points are dropped for convenience, nonsensical quests, and the worst, by far worst acting I've ever seen in Star Wars. You can't, can't disagree there. That bit, the show is not Mando's anymore, brings up another chief complaint. No shit. As the reason has given increased screen time to fellow Mandalorian, Bo Karen, I mean Bogatan, Katie Sackoff, and a bit less to propagandist uh, Din Djarin, Pedro Pascal. One Mandalorian director, Rick, whatever, suggested Din Djarin isn't necessarily the show's titular character anymore. Which is rather odd. Who is the Mandalorian at this point, he mused. And so I think it could be anyone. It should be the Mandalorian. Mando, Din Djarin, Baby Grogu, those two. If you bring back Baby Grogu in the first episode of season three, since if no one, if any of, if, if you haven't watched the book of Boba Fett, then you won't understand this because he should have been with Luke. However, Disney wanted to milk the cash cow and brought go Grogu brought baby Yoda back to Din Djarin before season three happened. Because they wanted to milk the cash cow. And now they're even sidelining baby Yoda. I'm sorry if you had your ears to the speakers whatever it's no longer his show period they should have made a new show if they wanted to push Bogotan but really I mean thinking about it as I said in my review she has failed how many times now nobody wants her this season is not Mandalorian season three. It's Bo Karen's, I mean, Bogotan season one, featuring Din Djarin and Grogu, who just follow her around. Gross to fan, gross to fan. Din Djarin now is now a supporting character, and Grogu is there for merchandising purposes only. Exactly what I just said. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't think so. Din Djarin chops off his balls and dick and hands it to Bo Karen and Bogotan. What a surprise! Pascal was splitting his time filming HBO's The Last of Us Season 1 when Mando Season 3 was being shot. Yeah, and, and you're not going to be long in Season 2 of The Last of Us. Uh, though the show regularly uses stunt doubles, Braden Wayne and Latif Crowder under the helmet with Pascal providing voiceover in post-production. This season, The Mandalorian began more prominently crediting Wayne and Crowder for their work on the series. 
Wow. So. I have no words. I mean, they basically said it. They they pointed it out what the problems are, and I have to agree. And let me know down in the comments below. Do you agree with these points? Do you disagree with these points? And remember, disagreeing is all right. You can do that. If you love this show, if you love this season, if you love this episode, this latest, let me know. And that's good for you. I'm glad that you can enjoy it. I can't. I think it's shit. But that's my opinion. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Smash that like button and consider subscribing. If you do, hit the bell for notifications. All right. Until next time. Take care.